So folks, what makes this moment extra delicious is that it's not only old Donnie that's flipping out and melting down as he takes big loss after big loss in this new case, but also many of his friends and allies and buddies in the media are losing their freaking minds as well. And that's why it's so glorious. So hit the like and subscribe button. It really helps me out. And let's jump right into it because what I have on the one hand is regular media pointing out how all of this is based on Donald Trump being a fearful little baby who can't help but sow disinfo about the case on the one hand, but then I'm going to show you both Trump and his best buddies in the media and in politics flip out as their buddy loses a case he has no chance in. This is delicious front to back and we'll break it down after. Of all time, we have a rogue judge, we have a racist attorney general who's a horror show. It's a scam, it's a sham. And our country's gone to hell. It's all run by DOJ, which is corrupt. Frankly, our country is corrupt. Joining us now, the co-author of Donald Trump's The Art of the Deal, Tony Schwartz. Good to see you. Good to see you. It's interesting. Um, and I, I was thinking about this yesterday as well. He doesn't have to be in this courtroom because it's a civil proceeding, not criminal. He's going to have to be there for the criminal trials. But he did not go to the civil trial uh, that e the case of E. Jean Carroll brought. And as someone who co-authored a book with him, I wonder what that tells you about what is most important to him. Donald Trump's sense of value comes entirely from his net worth. So his survival, his, his emotional survival depends on looking outside himself to define his internal value, which he feels none of. He feels worthless. So when you take him, when you accuse him of having less money than he's falsely claimed he has, he feels deeply diminished. And it's one of the reasons why at that event yesterday, you saw him looking so actively agitated. Most of the time when he's accused of stuff, he doesn't look that visibly agitated. He did yesterday, and I know it's because he felt small. Does he really? I think the thing that I've always tried to figure out, having read a lot of depositions, particularly in 2016, is I was trying to figure out how his business world operated. This was well known. He was always inflating and lying and talking about numbers that simply had no basis in reality. Why is he so offended about them being called out on that in court? I feel like well, I mean, he's in court. He's a, a, on the verge of losing these, you know, he has an edifice complex uh, to be differentiated from an edifice complex. He, again, the size of his buildings is connected to his sense of self-worth. So he's about to be stripped of all meaning uh, or all sense of, of worthiness. Uh, I think it's no surprise that when that actually becomes the threat, that he becomes more engaged and more interested. I want to take you through the facts today. We have Daniel Dale with us to walk us through what happened in the courtroom today. Daniel, Trump made quite a few claims, as usual. Some of them have already been rejected by this judge. But here is the former president claiming that this lawsuit is part of a coordinated effort by the Department of Justice. Is there any truth in that? There, there is. This trial was railroaded and fast-tracked. This trial could have been brought years ago, but they waited till I was right in the middle of my campaign. The same with other trials and indictments. It's all run by DOJ, which is corrupt in Washington. Everything goes through them. So, so to, the sorry, DOJ, Abby, yeah. he says, is part of all of this. Is there any truth to that? No, there is no truth to that. There is not a shred of evidence that DOJ is the hidden hand behind the scene. This is a, a state case brought by a state attorney general who Trump correctly noted today and on previous occasions made it part of his, her campaign platform that, that she was going to be tough on Trump. And the second significant inaccuracy in those comments there, Abby, was the part about timing, you know, waiting till the middle of my campaign. Attorney General James uh, launched the lawsuit that led to this trial in September 2022. That's when she filed it. Trump did not launch his campaign until November 2022. So the lawsuit that led to this trial was filed roughly two months before he even announced his 2024 candidacy.
Yeah, a, a good point there. Uh, Daniel, Trump also talked at length about what he called a worthless clause, a disclaimer that uh, he had put or his uh, his aides had put in the financial statements that are now at issue in this trial. Let's listen. We have a clause in the contract. It's like a buyer beware clause. It says when you take a look at the financial statement, don't believe anything you read. This is up front. Some people call it a worthless clause because it makes the statement and anything you read in the statement worthless. This is what's called a full disclaimer. We disclaim the financial statements. But even with a full disclaimer, which immediately takes you out of any fraud situation and any litigation. So what do we know about that, Daniel? Trump is making this clause sound way stronger than it actually is. You can read it. What it says, and I'm paraphrasing, is that the asset valuations in Trump's financial statements are estimates that they used a, a variety of methodologies to come up with these estimates, including in some cases uh, the judgments of Trump and his associates. It says that you know you may not be able to sell these assets for the same price that are that is listed here. So it does basically, in 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 so many words, encourage readers to be cautious about what they're seeing. But it does not say that what is contained in these statements is useless or worthless. It doesn't say don't believe anything you read. And the judge himself noted this uh, in his ruling last week, finding uh, Trump and, and his sons liable for fraud. The judge. All right. Joining us now with more reaction, Senator Lindsey Graham. Senator, you're a lawyer. You're a lawmaker. <laughs> yeah. I've never yeah. seen anything like this in my life. No, it's a systematic effort to destroy Donald Trump as a political person. His crime was he was a good conservative president. I've never seen hatred toward a political figure like I see against President Trump. Uh, the left uh, will do anything to ruin his life, to keep him uh, from being president again. And here's the good news. If you're a conservative, it's not working. He can't be in South Carolina today. But let me tell you, the people in South Carolina are watching what's happening to him in New York, and we're not going to let New York get away with this. If you think how do you Mar stop Senator, 18, How do you stop a judge? He wins the primary. He gets to be president again. This judge is a joke. Who got defrauded? Nobody. Everybody got. By Who's the, way, the victim? No, Who the lost money? The banks got paid. The insurance companies got paid. And by the way, I should add, it says in the contract, <laughs> yeah. don't go by our valuations because they have a fiduciary responsibility to do their own fiscal uh, valuations. You're not going to take the word of uh, somebody that wants to borrow that kind of money. You well, have to look at the. That's yeah. insane. But, Let's look at the AG. She started attacking President Trump in 2018, and she promised if she got to be the attorney general of New York, she would make this guy's life miserable, that she would go after him, look under every rock. So she has used Donald Trump to elevate herself politically. She is trying to get ahead at Donald Trump's expense. The judge has ruled that President Trump committed fraud and nobody got defrauded. The judge believes that Miralago is worth $18 million. What a friggin' joke. Let's talk about what happened in downtown New York yesterday. The president of the United States, former president of the United States, who wants to be the next president of the United States, went downtown for day one of his civil trial. He'll be there for day two, too. And he's defending his company. Now, he knows the judge has already made uh, pre-trial determinations that basically he's already committed fraud. But he was there. He gave his uh, point of view. You watch the attorney general, Lachester James, sit on the uh, court. But this smile is so unbelievable. And it just shows you what a carnival of... Uh, uh, what a joke this whole thing is. This judge thinks this is his moment of fame. He adjusts his hair. He takes off his glasses. Big smile on his face. It's going to be such an exciting day. Rick. I get to pretend I get to be judge and jury mm -hmm. over the next three well, months. And this is Donald the time. Yeah, this is to let the pool camera in. And that's where the whole right. goal is, to take away everything that he has and find him $250 million. But Trump had this moment, which was key. He told his side of the story first. This is why it made so much sense for him to show up. So full coverage begins now. Brett Baer on the political ramifications of both cases. Also talked to Sol Weisenberg on the legal angle. But what we're seeing right now is a scene we saw yesterday. Let's listen. Information about my net worth. Private company, nobody's supposed to know my net worth. Now everybody 
who is and will, and I hope you're impressed, he built a great company. But he's been given false information, misleading information, and corrupt information by a very corrupt and incompetent attorney general, Letitia James. This woman is grossly incompetent. She ran on the basis, I will get Trump without knowing anything about him. So he's been given this information. It's now been proven to be false, such as Mar-a-Lago in Palm Beach, Florida, being worth $18 million, when in fact it's much closer to $1.5 billion. And I appreciate very much the officials of Palm Beach calling yesterday and writing and saying that she was very wrong. That's not the way you got to the property. So she said it was $18 million, it's $1.5 billion. Likewise, we've just recently sold two properties for many times what they were worth, many times what they were worth in the financial statements. And the statements are actually much lower than the actual net worth. She knows that, but she's fraudulent. Because of the fraudulent numbers she's given, many of which, Marla, is just one example. We have other examples that are almost as good, in some cases might even be better. This case should be dismissed. This is not a case. And she should probably be dismissed also because she's terrible and grossly incompetent, as I said. But at a minimum, she should start looking for the murderers and the criminals, the violent criminals all over New York, do something about all of the illegal migrants pouring into our so just so our audience knows, we're going to take a different camera shot here. We think we have better audio from this angle. But at a minimum, she should start looking for the murderers and the criminals, the violent criminals all over New York, do something about all of the illegal migrants pouring into our city and state, and not spend the next six months in a courthouse because she's been caught early. Her numbers are fraudulent. She's a fraud. Her numbers are fraudulent, and this case should be dismissed. And they ought to get on to violent crime and solving the problems of New York City and New York State. Thank you very much. Mr. President, why did you decide to come? You didn't have to be here today. So here we go now, day two about to get underway, and um, we'll see how this goes. We're going to bring in Brett and Soul. And gentlemen, thanks for being with us. And so you can see there, right, there really is this sense that it, it's not working. This narrative that not only is this case a witch hunt against him, which is wrong, but that specifically it's a witch hunt from Washington is extra su super duper stupid because Letitia James has nothing to do with the DOJ. She's not a district attorney. She's not a, like, you know, there are district attorneys like the, in the Southern District of New York or whatnot that are appointed by presidents. Right. That are appointed by presidents or appointed by the attorney general who's appointed by the president. And they're all effectively under the DOJ umbrella. She is a state level official. And not only is she not appointed by the state, she is elected. She is an elected official who has nothing to do with Biden or D.C. But it really goes to show how all of this, as noted there, is demonstrating how small Trump feels. And when Trump feels small, it doesn't mean he's not dangerous. In many ways, it means he's most dangerous because he lashes out sort of like a dog with their back to the wall. And that's when he's going to start snapping and snarling. And that's really scary. But you can see the desperation, not just from Trump, but from his buddies like Lindsey, from his buddies like Sean, from other people at Fox, and from Trump himself. They don't know what to do here. It's all whataboutism, complaining about the cameras or whatnot, attacking the judge. All it is, guys, is 100% proof that he knows he's cooked and everybody else does too.